Hi everybody, this is Eric Johnson. Um, recently, I was talking to Candy Irvin. I think most people that are involved with the chase know who Candy Irvin is. Candy Irvin lives out in California, and um, I didn't know that until I started talking to her. I was like, wow, you really get up late, don't you? She goes, I live in California. I'm like three hours behind you or four hours behind you or something. I was like, okay, fine. Anyway, here's the point. I did a video recently where I kind of got, I was pissed off about the hunt, the chase. And I did, it was called BS and Lies. And I guess I've done two of them now that were kind of along the lines of BS and Lies. And Candy did a thing kind of about BS and stuff too. And long story short, she contacted me and wanted to talk about the state of the chase. And she is not happy about certain aspects of the chase. And I, of course, am not either. But I must say, Candy's a very nice person. She's a lot of fun to talk to. Um, and although she has issues with what's going on now, I found her in this interview that's coming up to be very kind of fun and lighthearted in a way that I'm not. I mean, I take, I don't want to say I take the chase serious, too seriously, but I mean, I was in it originally to actually find the treasure, and I went out to the Rockies, I think, six times, and I, when I say I think, well, because, well, it doesn't matter, I, yeah, it was six times, right? I'm sure it was. Anyway, um, one time I got snowed in, so I didn't actually search, but anyway, that always kind of messes me up. And I didn't check it before I came on on here to do this. Um, so what is my point? So my point is that uh, she and I agreed to do a conversation where I drive in my car. I did this with Mr. X. And it was kind of cool because it, my mind works good when I'm driving. Um, musicians have said, songwriters have said some of their best songs were written when they were traveling on the bus or, you know, in cars or vans. I don't know. There's something about when you're driving around and you're talking to someone, it's kind of easier to, you just freeze up part of your brain. Not that I necessarily was that great in the interview, but the point is, this is me and Candy talking about the latest aspects of the chase. Now, this interview was probably like a week ago. It took me a while to get it together because... Um, just personal stuff. And plus, I had to learn how to do something, but I was really glad I learned how to do something to make this interview work. It has to do with the audio. Because the audio in the interview, as is always the case when I do these uh, interviews in my car, you have these huge ranges of volume between the people talking. So that was cool to learn how to take care of that. Anyway, long story short, this was like right before I started doing this video. I tuned in, and this is relevant, I tuned in to a video cam, I saw it on YouTube, I was looking at YouTube, and there was a video cam of Jackson Hole, Wyoming, downtown. In other words, it was a live video cam of Jackson Hole, Wyoming, right now, today, before I was going to do this intro to this, in a conversation that Candy and I had about a week ago. And the funny thing is, you're looking at the video, and there's no sound, but you are watching Jackson Hole, Wyoming, right now, today, live video. A lot of cities and small towns have that, but it was kind of cool. And the thing that caught my eye was, over on the right, you had the comments. All these people are communicating to each other via this website. They're all talking. They're like, hey, Cindy. I remember Cindy. I saw the name. Said, hey, Cindy, I thought we were going to get together for lunch. Blah, blah, blah. I missed you. And she's like, oh, I, yeah, that's right. We were going to get together. They're using the Jackson Hole, Wyoming webcam for downtown as a social hub. And you're saying, well, what does that could do with anything? Because all the... Candy didn't put it in those terms, and she would probably say, well, no, I I mean, what I'm trying to say is I finally agreed to the fact that the Forest Fen Treasure Chase Hunt community is a social phenomenon. 
it's a social place. It's a place where people communicate. You, as I will say in the interview, we have. It's not so much money, because people aren't really making much money doing this. I mean, I mentioned maybe Calazars is making some money doing it, but it's uh, basically it's a it's a it's a group of people with egos who maybe clash at times. But it's a social phenomena, the whole treasure hunt chase at this point, which I've never been part of. I mean, I've always been kind of apart from the social structure. I've never made any effort to want to know any of the kind of inside people. That's really been my story of my life. Um, I've never wanted to be involved. Even when I was invited to be, I would be like, no, nah, I don't want I mean, I'm not talking about the chase. I'm talking about in the past. Going back, you know, ways. You know, I've been kind of invited in to these things. I'm like, nah, I don't want to. I think I just want to be by myself a lot. Anyway, the point is, it's still, uh, still the point is that I think this interview is really good. And it kind of, I think, is winding me down and out of the Chase community. Because I kind of agree with Candy that when she says, I mean, I guess in a sense, it's like I take it too seriously and for some people in the chase community this is all not that serious and so when they're talking about db cooper and stuff and i'm just kind of going db cooper candy's kind of like well you never know could happen could be possible and i'm kind of sitting there going yeah i guess it could be but i'm just not i mean just speaking for myself i'm not i'm the type that if the, the odds are pretty much against something being real. I just dismiss it. I don't pursue it any further. That's just the way I think. But I have to say, it was a very enjoyable interview with Candy. Uh, she's a very smart person, very bright, very fun, really, um, to talk to. And um, so it was kind of, a, it was a, it's a fun interview. And she gets to kind of speak her mind about what she thinks about the chase at this point, And so do I. Kind of a meeting of the minds of maybe two different ways of looking at the chase. And I was glad she did the interview. I asked her to do the interview, and she was like, yeah, okay, I'll do the interview. So I felt good about that. It was a pretty cool interview. She's a pretty cool person, I think. Um, so, everybody, I hope you enjoy it. It's about an hour long. It's kind of... It's, it's about an hour long. <laughs> you can always stop it and come back. I almost thought of making it two parts because it, it was two different uh, videos that I put together. But uh, then I decided, nah, screw it. This is... So with no further ado, this is my conversation in my car with Candy Irvin about the uh, current status of the Forest Fen treasure hunt community. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much. Later. And I think Alan Kelly, he's one of the best personalities in the case community. He's always positive, he's along with everyone. And he just had a fun little conspiracy brain idea with the Bokaha that he found. And he kind of ignited, you know, the community to go down the rabbit hole and look up that information. But I don't think people can take it so seriously just because someone or a few people on YouTube are just going down that rabbit hole sharing, you know, different connections or correlations they're putting together does not mean 100% fact, like 4% of what's D.B. Cooper. It just means that there's a possibility maybe he knew D.B. Cooper and he wrote the book, ha, ha, ha. Um, but, but, but you don't, no, Candy, you don't really believe that, though, do you? I think it's possible that Forrest knew the identity of D.B. Cooper based on his line of work in the military. Mm -hmm. And I think it's possible that he's either in connection with the person behind the publishing of Ha Ha Ha, or um, I looked up the, this one guy, I forgot his name, it was like Matt, Matt Buck, and he wrote an article back in 2003 where it seems like he was the first one to really identify and put the book Ha 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 out there. So when I was reading this article and I clicked on it, I found a link to his publishing website. I forgot the name of the publishing website, something really weird, like Kingdom Publishing or something. And when I go to this page, I come across this pivot. 
And I gotta show you this image, Eric, because it's literally four cents, page 99, from the thrill to chase. And then I'm reading the, the book cover, and it talks about the Ho Chi Minh Trail and everything. But this isn't written by Forrest, it's written by someone else, but it's published by the publisher. So, it's like, I, like, honestly, based on my research and things I've been finding over the years, I think Forrest has been trying to create a treasure hunt and a story for a very long time. And I found another book before called Peace Canyon that is a little fun Western story, fiction story about, um, you know, family, grandpa, and his um, granddaughter, <laughs> and how they're trying to find a treasure for, I think it was like Billy the Kid or something. And they end up coming across like some scary bad guy robbers, and there's some danger, but there's also treasure. And when you read that book, it's like where Forrest was behind writing it. So that's just another rap poem itself. I'm getting off topic. But the main issue here is it's not a big deal for people to go down their own rap holes and be like, hey, I think Forrest was a keeper. Or, well, see. That's kind of something I think I mentioned in one of my last videos. See, now I realize I'm talking to the very people <laughs> that I have a problem with. Not really, though, with you, per se, but, yeah, you're just like, see, I said that in one of the videos. I said, you know, I kind of get it that you, people just like to talk about Forrest Fed and the rabbit holes. I mean, it's like a social thing. You just get together. You all talk about it. On that, so Maybe I just do take it too seriously. Especially as you point out, especially as you point out, are you monetized? Yes, I'm monetized. So you know, so you're confirming, you're confirming what I've suspected that there's not, I mean, maybe I just do take it all too seriously, because I kept saying nobody can be really be making money off this, except maybe Calazar, because I know he's, he's done some big videos and he does the forest fit. And I even thought about that, I thought maybe 10 years from now they'll still be doing the, for, the fin whatever you poker game or something it'll just be kind of a nice reference to uh well that's kind of interesting what you say about alan i didn't mean to cut you off i don't know the guy at all but apparently i've pissed them off because now they're saying uh you know i'm obsessed with them and stuff and as i said before i started recording it's not them it's not them that i care about i just took offense to the concept that anybody was really trying to push the db cooper thing but now talking to you i feel like maybe i should just not you know, what the hell? I mean, who cares, right? Well, I think there's a fine line between that, right? So it's like all fun and games when we're just having fun with it, and just like entertaining people's ideas and going down research, but then it totally loses its, I guess you say luster or its, its sense of fun when people take that idea and try and monopolize on it. That's when I think it gets to the point where it's just like, knock it off. So, like, with Alan doing it, it was fun. With Ben doing it, yeah, it was fun, too. But now that other people have caught on and they're trying to make it, take it, take it over, make it about them, that's where I totally agree with you. I think it's absolute bullshit. And I but think I know who we're talking about. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just, it's fun. Well, I find it funny because... It's totally fine to just have your own research and everything and share it with the world, but you know what pisses me off more than anything? People who take your research and try and pass it off as their own. And I'm not talking about YouTube or anything like that. I'm just talking in general. Yeah. Yeah. And that um, makes it kind of shitty in the end. <laughs> well, see, recently, uh, you, you know Troy Barlow, right? Yeah. Okay, so recently... Uh, he had a run-in with, uh, well, I'll call, I shouldn't call it a run-in. You know, he kind of wanted Mike to admit that Mike had gotten this uh, this theory that I guess Mike had done a really turned out to be a huge video. I guess it was in the 30s or 40,000 people watched it. And it was Troy's idea. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because in Mike just recently, someone told me to watch it. Mike just recently made a point of saying, okay, I give... I give Troy the credit for that theory that I brought up that did so well. Was it the wheel? Yeah. I guess it was a wheel, or I think it was a wheel. Yeah, it was a wheel. So he said yeah, in a recent... Yes, yeah, so try the wheel. So he said that in a recent inter, uh, monologue that he did. Now he's back to the thing with the coffee, and, he, and Capra wasn't there. 
and but he said okay Troy you did come up with that first I did get it from you so that was kind of cool um, but even Mike is starting to say folks come on it's over I mean <laughs> but I guess people are always going to discuss it so what the hell well, that's the thing, though. So it's, it's great that Mike thinks it's over and he wants to move on and everything, but there's other, like um, like myself, for instance, out there that believe that there's something so much bigger and deeper um, behind the story that's ending. And that's why we have such a crap ending. Oh, I do, now. too. I do, too. Yeah, I see, and, like, you can think outside the box and, and think it's more than just, nine clues that lead to a place that people say oh well it's going to be here but we can't give you the proof for it which again pisses more people off yes and it's not people just coming from those people it's because they keep trying to shove it down our throats and then say okay this time it's going to be different it's going to be different this time we're going to give you evidence this time we're going to give you proof and instead it's like oh well we went here and we we were told this he said she said like dangling a carrot in front of us exactly but because legalities you can't hear it and it's just like fuck off grab her balls and just say it shut up yeah i think myself and a lot of people really feel shut up or just don't say anything that's how i feel Tell it. It's like, it's not Tell it. It's not really salty or anything. It's just because I am so emotionally fed up with that shit. And a lot of people are. And it's just like, Candy, why are you so angry? If you knew the stuff I knew from the behind the scenes, you'd be just as pissed off as me. Tell me more. So it's just like, stop talking about the one thing the people found for your ass. And then you decide to tweak it, pass it off as your own, and then absolutely ruin it. That's just, that's my opinion. Wow. Well, I hear you because I know I saw one of your vid that, uh, again, people, as I explained to you the other day when we were talking about doing this, I am so hit and miss with the chase. You know, it's kind of like with the D.B. Cooper thing. Someone, <laughs> what's always happening is someone tells me to watch something because I'm never naturally watching stuff. And so I watch that and it pissed me off. So then I get into the D.B. Cooper thing and then it, you know, it gets all excited but as i was telling you the other day my general knowledge of the chase community and the people i'm so i don't know anybody and i that's why i told you i'll be kind of adrift talking to you because you know all these people and one thing i heard you talk about in your recent thing about bs and lies or whatever it was you said i did not realize how badly people like mindy fozzy is that her name yeah. How badly people had been uh, harassed, and I think where is this coming from? This is crazy. This, I mean, Forrest Fenn was not—I don't know. It just freaks me out that people take everything so personally. They're harassing people and, and hurting their life. Well, I feel like Mindy wasn't wrong when she was outright just saying she didn't know who the Forrest Fenn created a cult because we do have cult-like behavior. And she did a great example on yes. one radio podcast called Dead Rabbit Radio. And just because you say, um, you know, we act like cults do not mean we're a cult, especially in the satanic, like the worshiping sense, not at all. Right. It just means that anything that goes against the leader is known as blasphemy and you're ostracized from society for even thinking it. Exactly. And... I mean, it took me a while to finally see it because I'm, I was no saint. I was terrible to Mindy just like everybody else without even knowing why. Just because I was under the impression that she was out to get Forrest Ben, my friend. She, she was saying terrible things about her. I was told she did terrible things. And I was too dumb, like, I was too dumb to just straight up ask someone or ask her, is this true? Can I see some evidence? And so that's why right now I'm so hell-bent on having people in the community stop and realize, if you ever hear a rumor about someone, don't take that rumor and run with it, add to it, be terrible to a person. Like, it took me a while to grow the F up and figure this out, but ask for the damn proof. If there is none, it means it wasn't true. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm getting hell right now just for supporting her. Wow. 
bold. And that's another reason why I'm a little pissy about certain people in the kids' community. Uh, now, keep in mind as we talk, I can edit anything. So if you're if you're hesitant to say things, or even if you say things and then later you want it, you say, Eric, please, I don't, don't say that. Uh, just edit it out. But I mean, you're, I assume you're pretty pissed off with K-Pro, right? Everyone seems to be. I noticed that when I got involved in the when I got involved in the I'm sorry when I got involved in the chase, I kept hearing about this K Pro, this K Pro that she went to Finn's compound and she was screaming at him to give more clues and where's the money and <laughs> I thought, wow, this is. Go I ahead. Know the rumor, though. I've never heard the tape. I don't know if the tape exists. Oh, I heard it. I heard it. I'm pretty sure it was her too, and I heard it. And again, I'm not even sure I'll, I'll leave this in the edited version because I don't want to get into it with the... Uh, although, what the hell, it's just a it's just a silly... She just went there and was really kind of me. You know what I've managed to do here, Candy? I what? think I'm lost. But anyway, let's go ahead and keep... I, let's go ahead and keep talking. Yeah, I'm, I think I know where I am. Yeah, I'm lost. I'm lost, not far from where I live, but I think, I think I'm in Lexington. Well, I've just been listening to you and just kind of lost track of uh, where I was driving. Oh, sorry. No, no problem. Uh, no, it's not that I'm pissed off at Caper or anything. I'm just, I'm disappointed because, like, you know, I thought we were friends and everything, but up and like around the last few months, especially after the whole LLC thing went down, I started realizing he did not treat me the, like like how a friend would treat you. Right. You're like a, a, a freaking peon or servant, the way she treated me. And anytime I would come up with my research and ideas and try to share it with her, and I mean, it's not just my perspective. Like, you can go on their channel and see where she totally shoots my ideas down. Like, for example, when I said, oh, I finally figured out what of the slip ups dad is talking about in regards to Ben and, and how she figured it out. And I, I told them, I'm like, it's this one article where the reporter gets bit by the dog while on the property, and they're talking about, like, his Alzheimer's and everything, and then he goes to trail off and he talks about his favorite dot, 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 and I filled it in, I said, fishing pole. And I remember I super chatted that, Mike was like, oh, sorry, he's like, oh, this might be breaking news. And Chrissy's just like, nope, Chrissy, and she's like, no, no, shut it down, Mike, shut it down. And then the next thing you know, Everyone's talking about the nine mile hole, the favorite fishing hole, all that other stuff. And it's like, I don't need credit for it. It's just sad that people will like treat you like nothing if you don't bring them anything or if you're a threat to them or you take the limelight. And that's how I feel feeling. And then pop it off with the shit that she's been doing and saying about certain people, especially Vicky. That just ended my friendship with her. Yeah, that's what I suspected. There's so much that I don't know and I don't need to know, but I can just tell by this, there's this big tension that you can just, yeah, like you said, you know a lot of stuff and you probably don't even want to talk about a lot of stuff, but since you know it, it makes you emotional. Um, uh, by the way, I figured out where I am. I'm coming back to where I live now. Um, yeah, I'm glad I didn't end up in uh, the next county. Uh, so anyway, what uh, what else did I want to ask you? Or if you want to say anything, just uh, I don't think we've said anything bad so far. I think a lot of what we're talking about is out there anyway, because everyone talks about it in their videos. <laughs> so it's just more of the same. But um, well, what is your so? What do you think the status of the chase is at this point? Do you think it's heading for uh, what's the old thing ends ends with a whimper? or ends with a bang because my whole thing with the chase is that I find it very suspect that Fenn was talking about ending the chase with Dale and then after that guy Sexton died in March Fenn turns around and I think again said to Dale pretty sure I want to end this thing and then as Dale himself pointed out then suddenly a few months later this guy Jack shows up and it's ended 
and then a few months after that, Fenn dies. I mean, that to me is a string of events that are really hard to believe didn't have I some mean, purpose. I'm probably going to piss off a lot of people just for saying this, but especially from what I know, what I told you last time, I know for a fact Cynthia and Matt, if you smell sunshine, were directly ordered by Forrest Ben himself to go to the place where he wrote his letter for Peggy, somewhere between Montana, Wyoming on the Madison River, allegedly. I don't know if that's true or not. But the next day he dies? I mean, I'm sorry. I totally think he took sleeping pills, just like his original plan was to do so. See, he so do I. Pills. Yeah, so do I. Yep, I believe he committed suicide. The timing is just too suspect. Yeah, and not to mention, it was two weeks to the day of his 90th birthday party. Like, I was the one that hosted the 90th birthday bash for him on film, and he was watching it the entire time while we had a whole bunch of searchers join the Zoom panel and discuss about your favorite boots on the ground adventures, um, what they were to the chase. Like, it was something that he absolutely loved, and I have an email where he tells me that. Wow. Two weeks to the day, he passes away. And it's like right after, like right before that, I remember Cynthia messaged me and she was like, oh, we're going to have a fun finale. Make sure you're going to be there. You have to be there. And then Matt messaging me saying like, you have to be there. And I go and tell my boyfriend, I'm like, we're going. He's like, no. And normally I like wouldn't travel anywhere without him. It's a little scary cat, but I wanted so badly to go. I was like, screw it. I'm going to do this on my own. So I ended up going to, you know, West Yellowstone for the fun finale. And, like, the way everything was organized and set up, it was like, Ben orchestrated all of this. And then the next thing you know, like, literally, what was it, the day after the final day at the Fenton Alley, he passed away. So, it's like... He kind of, he kind of coordinated, he kind of coordinated a farewell party in a way, right? Yeah, and he was watching the entire time. And he was messaging, like, he was emailing me the entire time. I was told by, um, Cynthia, we need help, we need to go around taking photos of everyone at the event finale. And I'm like, I'm super creative, so instead of taking a photo, I took a photo, I got the search for me, I asked where they were searching, and then, like, a little message we wanted to send to him. And I wrote all those books, took them all the sent, and he responded to every single one of them. And I actually posted, I think it was on Collins' page or something, I posted those, those emails and those responses so that people can say, hey, I got a, a, a special message back and forth for that. So it's just, it, there were so many details that added up to this was something planned, he wanted this to happen. And I think he kept saving pills, and it's not wrong to me. Like that. And they also have a drug that simulates a heart attack. Um, I don't know if it would be like a heart attack, if I think it's the, the sleep report or like the death report or something, and said that they found him unconscious but like snoring, and that's the uh, signs of, you know, taking sleeping pills. Yeah. Wow, so, this is fascinating. But that's just my, my opinion. I'm not saying it's fact or anything. It's just based on certain information that I've either been told or I figured out. It's just, it adds up to, look, this is something that he wanted to happen. But in my opinion, I think the chase just now started. I don't think this entire past 10 years that we've been reading the memoir, going to on the ground, stuff like that, trying to call the next suit. I don't think he's been playing the case. I think he's been watching. And, I mean, I can't even tell you the name of, like, a handful of treasure hunt creators that actively were reaching out and, and responding to people that were trying to solve their puzzles, right? Right. It's like, he wanted people to come to his house. He wanted to meet them. He corresponded with them via emails or phone calls for like years and it doesn't make sense except for the fact that maybe he was looking for certain people huh that's interesting too yeah I mean I've got a lot of research when people say oh you know you're just trying to stay re no I'm not staying relevant at all I'm just I cannot let this story go and 
I mean, the fact that, you know, allegedly Jack exists and he, he found the treasure, um, it doesn't make me want to stop because I was never in it for the treasure to begin with. I was always in it for the story, the reason and the motivation why he did this. And it wasn't until I stopped listening to people, stopped following he said, she said, and I finally started doing what I wanted to do, which happened to me, find the, the, the origin of the story of the motif of his treasure chest, and stuff there and unlocking for me. So I know a lot of people, they like get the key or the storm, or they like run away when he talks about spirituality and stuff. But people need to understand that Forrest Gump himself did tell us that he is one of the most spiritual people. He was spiritual, yeah. not religious. And y yeah. I think that is a huge piece of the puzzle that we're all missing. Do you, so you do not believe, you, did you hear that someone was saying that Shiloh recently, I mean, you heard about this thing where Cynthia and them went to see Shiloh and Capro hid in the back seat and all that? And then, yeah. and then, I don't know anything about Shiloh, but wouldn't you think Shiloh would start getting a little gun shy about letting Cynthia show up if she's going to start sneaking in Capro? <laughs> Because you know, it was like they said something like when he saw Capro, he was kind of like, you and I need to talk. And so they had a little bit of a discussion. But, I mean, it seems like they're kind of burning the bridges. And But well, let me get to my point. So my point was that somebody said Shiloh said, oh, Mike Cowling said that Shiloh said they did not nudge Jack in the direction. They had no connection to it at all. Is that your belief also? That Jack did it on his own? I, I think there's like so many rabbit holes you can go down, but one thing I am certain of, unless you actually have Shiloh on video or, or audio record saying that stuff, I will not believe a single word that comes out of anyone's mouth until it comes from the source, like direct source. We're going to yeah. name behind that source. I hear you. I'm so tired of it. He said, she said, BS. Right. That I to agree with anything being said without actual evidence. I'm sorry, can I stop you right there? Yeah, I've got it. You're right, because recently I saw an interview, and Capro said, it, we're back to D.B. Cooper, and this is kind of to your point of people kind of taking someone else's idea and then exploiting it for themselves. She picked up on this thing about D.B. Cooper being Finn, and she goes, I have it on good authority that I guess one of the stewardesses on the plane reported that uh, D.B. Cooper did not seem to inhale his cigarettes, fostering this concept that it was Fenn faking smoking. I'm thinking, where in the world is the link for that? I didn't read anything about it. I'm sorry, what? Do you really want to know my opinion on that? Yes, Candy. <laughs> Since we're talking. April is going down this D.B. Cooper rabbit hole. It's solely only because Mindy finally started coming back to the community and Stephanie too. And Stephanie and Mindy were the original OG searchers that started being crazy enough to insinuate the possibility that Ben could have been D.B. Cooper. They even wrote a book on it and said it's going to have it turned into a movie allegedly. Seen the email. And I think she cannot stand someone else being in the fucking limelight. So now she's jumping on board because, hey, it's you. That's what I think. So I have this. I have been. I now find myself corrected to some extent on a number of things. So it's not about the money, as you point out. It's about we're just talking egos, right? We're talking about a lot of different people. And I realize K Pro and Mike were out there, just like uh, AGK, doing videos and working with them and producing the videos. It's a lot of egos. People feel like they're kind of in charge of the hunt, and it's much more that than anything else from what I'm gathering from you. I mean, just speaking from experience, it seems like a lot of people that I've been told are terrible monsters, attack people, predators, shit like that. They're not. And that goes back to the whole thing I was saying before, the rumor mill, right? You not believe a damn thing about rumors unless you have evidence to back it up. And I'm noticing that certain channels specifically, they pass it off like they're being attacked, that they can 
gonna be left alone, be fine, stop attacking me. This is one fucking orchestrating the whole thing, in my opinion. So, and not to be salty about it, because it is a little personal for me, but it's also personal for a lot of other searchers that have unfortunately been in the war class of this. Yeah. I just think that it could have been so much more fun to just be able to come together, share research, and try to figure out the story without ruining the story based on egos and he said, she said, she said at first type shit. Right, and I so agree. It's funny, funny when it comes to she said, she said first type thing versus person found something for research and someone took that information. But a huge way to differentiate something. And obviously a lot of us, we all have, you know, different rabbit holes to go down and we're going to come across the same information. But when you outright know someone discovered something and they share it with you and then you take it and pass it off to your own and then you ostracize them from society, that, that's pretty messed up. So, yeah, I think the whole D.D. Cooper rabbit hole thing going on, aside from Ben and Alan, um, I think... A lot of people are just doing it based on some relevant, honestly. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you another question. I think I touched with you on this when we last talked. I said something about, I don't know why that picture of Cynthia bothers me. Well, it, it's because, it, again, someone would well, you maybe you're obsessed with her. No, I'm obsessed with the fact that she doesn't show her face. I don't understand why you put out a picture of yourself naked looking away from the camera. But you said... I'm pretty sure I'm correct. No, that's a legit yeah. picture. That's her because you can see in the photo where her head's turned, you can still see the thought off of Leon Green glasses that she's infamous for wearing. Come on, Eric. Oh, that's see, awesome. I don't keep up with that. I don't know. Someone else that's did mention awesome. that. Okay, so now I have to apologize in a kind of a way to Cynthia for thinking she was not the person in the... Well, good for Cynthia. She looked pretty good in the photo. That's all I can say. No, she looks amazing. Like, she looks <laughs> amazing. I won't fucking deny that. It's like, yeah, you got a really nice freaking physique, but your personality sucks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is hilarious. Okay. It's just, it's just funny, because you're, like, when I was watching your video last time, I was like, you gotta show the photo. Holy shit, he showed the Wow. Yeah. What did you say? I don't think you would have shown the photo on your video. Oh, yeah. I, was, I think I used cereal at the time, and I looked for my cereal out. Well, you know, I found it it's so easily. I mean, I think I would. I said, you know, Eric, if you can go online and find it really quickly, just post it, because obviously it's out there. And I think I just went in and put Cynthia Meacham naked, and it, up it popped. So I was like, okay, forget it. It's out there anyway. Oh man. <laughs> I'm driving through this I'm driving through this little cubby hole community here. It's kind of interesting, but they're very, very small condos, very small. But they have the thing it's known for is you you get these little condos that are probably literally 1300 square foot. But the cool thing is you can walk, yeah, there they are. People will see this in the video. You can walk right at your back door and go to your boat. I mean, you can go to your boat within 100 yards, uh, hell, 60 yards. That's pretty cool if you're a big boat person. Oh, nice. Well, anyway. Well, I want to ask you, um, so, like, I never originally knew you were the first one to, like, I guess you could say entertain this idea, but you were basically insinuating that the possibility someone sent a rat virus, a remote, uh, yeah. remote virus, right? Yes, this was actually something that was sent to me by somebody, not the rat virus, the idea. And it came from a group, there was a group on Reddit. And this group, there were two, there was a group that was investigating Fenn. And then they, one of the people supposedly hacked into Fenn with a rat virus. And then, which is, you can put it in there and kind of watch everything the person's doing. You can look at their desktop and stuff. And then a second group broke off because they didn't get 
well, see, this, if I remember correctly, this goes into the whole concept that they were behind the find. So it's another rabbit hole. But yes, a rat virus, which, you know, Finn was supposedly notorious. Oh my God, how am I going to get out of here? Finn was notorious for, um, please don't run into me. Thank you. Yeah, hi. Finn was notorious, supposedly, for, for you know, if uh, someone if uh, someone sent him a picture, especially a woman or a woman, then he supposedly was kind of like, okay, well, maybe I'll see some, you know, TNA. And I thought, well, there you go. I mean, God knows what people sent to Finn, and he clicked on things and... <laughs> You know, unless he had an IT guy that was really sitting on top of his computer, he could easily have been hacked. Well, that's the thing too. Like for the longest time, I was trying to um, like make sense of the auction website rabbit hole, and then I like momentarily gave up on it. Then Patrick Jack comes out of nowhere, and he gets me to go back into the rabbit hole of that again. Then I discover the Campo Cal Wyoming LLC, and it was set up by somebody else. And I find out who that was, and that was my source. That was the person that told them about the um, GPS solution. And just like all this crazy stuff. And so I, I put it on the back burner again, because I didn't know what to do with it anymore. And then we've got a package back when it's back and hot again, because by the way, it runs this own tech company where they like can trace a lot of stuff, if you know what I mean. Right. Um, and he won't drop off the subject. He keeps insinuating that there's something behind it. And then not that he's definitely also going down the TV super rabbit hole. And I was like, I don't, I don't know about that one. But why, why is he so adamant about the Austin website rabbit hole? I mean, I spent months on it, and I still think there's something there. And you don't know what the hell to do with it. I really don't. So I was wondering what you thought of it, or if you had any of your research like that. About the auction site? Yeah. All I know is that I had two different people called up and absolutely went... Oh, that's interesting. I just went past the baseball bat lying in the road. Um, so two different people called up, and Steve Klein and uh, my advisor and I think I explained why I call him my advisor. He just doesn't want to be known. He's a businessman. He doesn't want to be he doesn't want to be publicly associated with the Finn thing because he doesn't want people thinking he's kind of into fringe things, but that's that's all there is to it. There's nothing mysterious about it. So he called them and Steve called them and they were told flat out there is no treasure chest there. There's not they auction off Finn stuff. They always have auctioned Finn stuff, but they have no record of any chest in any form just being audit. Uh, what do you call it? When the appraisal, because then someone said, well, it was because it was just an appraisal. And as Steve Klein pointed out, everything you do with an auction house, they have to write a ticket out for it to show the work. And these people assured them for whatever reason, and I'm sure some people go, well, they're just lying because they're getting a kickback. You know, you just... They said, no, we do not have the four spin treasure chest. So I just thought it was interesting that it, people put out a theory and two people call them up and so easily just call and they say, no, we don't have it. Because no one ever, it's exactly what you were saying, Candy. Everybody takes everything at face value and they don't even make the obvious phone call to, to hear it from the horse's mouth. That's exactly yeah. what you've been saying. And it was so easily, now if you want to have, you know, if you want to believe D.B. Cooper really had on some sort of makeup to look Latino, or he was really faking smoking because he's really thin and he, you know, broke character and had a couple of bourbon and sodas because I guess Fenn does drink lightly. Does Fenn drink? Was he a drinker? I guess he was, huh? I mean, he told me that he used to drink um, a Sergio Martini, like a double Sergio Martini or something, once every year to my so I did the same. But again, I wouldn't know personally because it's only people that have heard saying he was a drinker or people that didn't come through. So I wouldn't know. Um, but I think it makes sense that he stopped drinking after putting on the punch because when you drink, you tend to give out a little bit more information, really. So, <laughs> I honestly don't know how he kept his secret for so long. 
So, okay, and I guess we're getting close to the end if that's okay with you, only because I'm getting very hungry. You know, I'd like to do this again in a way, and I'm really hoping to God, you have a lot of information. I'm really hoping the audio on this is okay, because I a couple of times I, you, you, you were coming through, but it's a little fuzzy for me. But could you wrap it up as to um, what you think, where do you think, what do you think is going on with the chest right now? And after that, say anything you want, but do you have any idea of what you think is going on with the chest? I think the chest, okay, so there's so many rabbit holes you can go down, but I one know. of the bigger rabbit holes that I am more partial to is that the whole auction, the private auction that's allegedly going on right now ties into the secret auction website that we discovered in 2020 right before it, the chest was found. And I think that people are allegedly coming forward and insinuating that the chest is being auctioned off so that it could cover the fact that it was auctioned off last year, not this year. So that's my own weird rap hole with the auction website and the LLCs and all kinds of other stuff. Um, but I think, honestly, I could give a flying F about the gold and the chest itself. I think what we're meant to be looking for right now, as we speak, are those jars. You know the bells and jars right yeah. in um, Dancing with the Millennium? Yeah, well, you know, you know, you know the whole Ken Tankersley thing, right? Yeah, I have the emails from him. Oh, cool. Oh, that's excellent. Um, well, anyway, one of the emails that I did, well, I, obviously I didn't have the balls to, pu to publish any of them because he told me he'd sue me, but, which was fine. That's his right. But one of the things he said was, the whole thing was you were to find the treasure. You had to follow those jars that he had, uh, Ben had put underground. And then yeah, I so thought, a, go ahead. It was originally planned to be a clue in each jar. Oh. And what I find interesting is, like, when I corresponded with him, he told me straight up, he, he knew the treasure wasn't, like, a treasure at all, and it's more of, like, a spiritual... A spiritual of, thing, yeah. Quest. Yeah. And, I mean, there's certain elements I'm still trying to figure out based on what that our conversation was and then what other emails we've seen and everything. But I feel like, I mean, I'm going to get down the weird rap hole for a second in regards to my cult um, research about, like, secret ancient cults and everything like that. I think it's a possibility it might be tied into one along with Doug um, Preston and Dale and others. Um, and, I mean, I've got so many rabbit holes and the biggest one of all, and um, it's not just me who actually found information that ties into this. Mario, Zombie D Street, there's um, a, a, a select few in the community that have also connected this. And this all goes down to ancient secret knowledge, and it pertains to the seven cities of gold. And before anyone says, oh, you're off your rocker, you're crazy, you can see that Douglas Preston and Lincoln Child wrote a book looking for the seven cities of gold by following Coronado's path from Arizona to New Mexico. And there's an old um, post on Forrest blog, if you go to the Wayback Machine, this is way back in like, I want to say 2003. Well, he yeah, right, just does. That book is his all time favorite book. And it talks about how he has the um, journals of Coronado's photographer and how he was interested in the seven cities of gold. And same thing with, you know, Nippy and Bill, they were looking for treasure, you know, especially out in uh, Guatemala, Mexico, Quantum Ru and everything like that. Yeah. And there are um, old archives where it actually links the transportation of certain Spanish ships to gold to Guatemala and also Florida, where you know about the Paul Fisher and the Tosha. It, just, it, it seems to all be connecting. And what's fascinating to me is that Ben was obsessed with following Coronado and looking for the seven cities of gold. And in 78, which is rumored to be the year that Gibby allegedly died, you know, in Cozumel, there was an archaeological discovery that was like 
I posted about it on my page last night. Um, it was the discovery of a tomb that was linked to this moon goddess. And what's really interesting about it is inside the tomb wall, it's called like the inscription something, I'll link more information for you, was written the information based on some tomb hold and it links back to Sam Lazaro. And we all know Sam Lazaro was the first fuck? son. What? Obviously, it wasn't called Cam Lazaro back then. It was named something else, but right. it was changing Cam Lazaro, you know, on um, the maps and everything. But yeah, it links back to Cam Lazaro. Um, Holy so it's, moly. It's like people don't comprehend or understand how, like, deep I'm going with this rabbit hole. But it's not just, like, me that's discovering this stuff. Kyle I Sandow was right. Really Kyle Sandow was right. <laughs> no, 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 not, not, not at all. No, hell no, not, not at all. Okay. He was like, I don't even know. I think he was saying about like the test was at Sam Lazaro. Yeah, that's what he was but saying. No. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's the thing about it. But the test was the decoy. You were supposed, to, in my opinion, oh my based on my research and showing down, you were supposed to choose the knowledge, the jars, to get the answer to Sam Lazaro versus going for the test of gold. But like that's just so much research that I've been doing. There's so much we still have to talk about, and like people should listen to Dommy B and Street and Mario. So these are people I never even talked to, you know, aside from Street, and they came to the same information that I have, but they used the poem doing it. They like found some CIA weird operative way to like find hidden messages in that damn thing, which is like beyond what I can do. But I've just gone old school and looked up old books and nonstop research. Wow. Uh, but yeah, in regards to the chest itself, that's a damn decoy. The only thing that I think was meant for us to actually take from that chest is the origin of the motif of that chest and what it unlocks and what it leads to. Um, so yeah, if anyone thinks that that chest right now is in some type of auction house doing a private auction, they might as well just give up and say it's over. It's like it's I, like I, the I, X Files. It's like the X Files. It's sitting in this big warehouse with all this other classified stuff. Hey, so oh, no, there's some government stuff. Like, have you looked at Sam Lazaro? It's under guard, lock and key, twenty four seven. Wow. I don't know. See, this is what I said earlier. You guys know so much more of what's going on that I'm just kind of sitting here, kind of going, wow. Well, let me ask you something. Like I said, I'm about to go pick up some Chinese, but it's okay. But um, let me ask you, just on a party note, uh, what's up with Europe? Do you study your uh, ancestry? Because you're going to Europe, right? Didn't you say that on Facebook or something? Yeah, um, I'm going. I'm going next year with Mindy and her boyfriend James. We're going to Scotland, Paris, London, York. Uh, wow. Doing all the fun. Wow, that's cool. So you so you've studied your ancestry because I find that stuff fascinating. You know, I don't know if you're in any of these uh, like ancestry dot. I guess I'm in twenty three and me or whatever it's called. That's just yeah. really wild the way they just send you emails like, oh, you have a tendency to like bitter things, you know, or you have a tendency. It's kind of like wow, they really know a lot about you just from a saliva sample. But yeah, I, I was you thinking. But oh I my god. Oh my oh, god, my you ancestors? should do it. No, I, I found my ancestry, but I didn't need a, a company to do it for me. Oh. But I mean, see, when you turn it in, it. T let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. My mom always thought we had Scottish blood, but we don't according to our genetics my my ancestry for instance is first swedish second german third english fourth irish so i and i'm sitting here going mom no scottish blood sorry she's passed i'm like sorry mom you were wrong but then here's something this is really going in a weird weird direction candy i apologize for what i'm about to say this is really kind of weird the way things work out but anyway when we grew up, and again, my mom used to think we had Scottish blood, although my ancestry genes tell me we don't technically, although English, Irish, you're pretty, you know, you're pretty close. I mean, you're right in there. But anyway, when we, when we were brought up, 
we, my mom would call when you go to the bathroom, she would call it a jobby. She'd be like, Eric, did you have a good jobby? I mean, this is, you know, when I was a little kid. Obviously, she's not asking me that when I'm grown up. And I'd be like, yes, mom. So that was a word in our family. And I, of course, never asked anyone about it or do you use that word? So year, flash forward to years later, I'm watching a Scottish comic. I forget what his name is, but he was pretty funny. And he starts talking at one point about jobbies. And I went, there's that word, and he's Scottish. So I may, I don't know, maybe your English heritage was, I don't know, it gets, I'm, I'm, I told you I was gonna get really, I just thought the flash in my mind that my mom had always used that word when we were little kids. And, and there it was. So then I was kind of like, well, maybe mom wasn't wrong. Ancestry is interesting. Are you going to try to train? Are you going to try to follow your ancestry over there? Um, I'm actually going over there to do that. That's pretty cool. I was thinking of actually at some point. I've really got to wrap this up. Wow, we've been on the phone. We've been doing this recording. Oh, we've been on the phone for almost an hour. Okay. So anyway, I was thinking, and now they do this. They do this with the, uh, you know, they set up companies that will do this for you. But I was thinking of going to my ancestral locations, which would be uh, first Gothenburg, which is uh, Sweden. And then the second is, uh, it's just fascinating to me that they can pinpoint right down to where your ancestors lived. And then I think it's uh, Hesse in Germany, and then it's Manchester in England. And I guess those would be the three I'd go to. But I just think it'd be really interesting. Uh, that's why it caught my eye when I saw you were talking about that. I thought it would be very interesting just to go back and maybe see if you're out driving around and suddenly you have this weird flashback to a field you see that it brings up some distant memory. I know that sounds kind of far out, but there is something to no, genetic. I totally believe in all that stuff. Yeah, genetic memory. It's a very real thing. Yeah, no, um, I, I know it's real because I'm experienced, but 100%. And um, I mean, I can't go too much into detail, but yeah, I'm definitely Scottish, Irish, German, Swedish. And I even found out that um, I had an ancestor that was actually Blackfoot Indian, and her name was Kichi Self. So I even have a very small percentage of Blackfoot Indian blood. See, and that's another thing when you bring that up. I was all, another kind of, uh, legend in the family was that one of my family had married a Indian woman up in Rhode Island back in the 1700s and alas there was no uh, there was no Native American genetics so that was a that was a legend from the family that I mean to the extent you want to place your you know depend on the science they're using yeah okay well anyway Go ahead. Oh, what was that? Go ahead. Oh, I actually found, um, I won't say where, uh, but I found a book that was telling certain lore. And it just so happened that that book was written by one of my ancestors. Wow. So, yeah, I won't expose too much about that, but yeah, it's, it's really cool. I've definitely gone down the rabbit hole just on my mother's side. On my father's side, I don't really know that much because he was adopted and he doesn't know his um, biological parents, so I don't really know my father's side. Uh, but on my mom's side, there's just some very interesting connections over there. <laughs> interesting. This has really been a fun conversation. I've enjoyed it. I am praying. I am praying this thing recorded properly because you've been a font of information for me. Um, even though I do the videos, you know, I only did them just to show my trips out west, and then it got more. I've got a little bit more involved, but you're on a whole nother level with other people that are, you're all much more interconnected. So, on that note, I would. I'm going to say goodbye. Maybe we can do it another time, sometime. And um, it's really been cool talking to you. Yeah, you too, Alright, well, I'll talk to you later. Have a good one. Okay. You too. Bye. Bye. Well, there you go, folks. I just talked to uh, Candy Irvin. I find her very, very interesting. 
she is opening my mind up a little bit to the fact that I'm a little too hardcore with the nuts and bolts kind of it's just the way I'm wired it but as she pointed and as I've kind of known in the past I'm now heading to get Chinese food as I've kind of put it in the past um, I understand the value of just kicking around ideas for fun and so I guess maybe I should just let it lay at that and not get involved and when people contact me about stuff maybe maybe uh, be a little more oh man that was a dead deer that sucked you know be, just be a little bit lighter about it I don't know I mean if people want to pursue D.B. Cooper like it sounds like Candy finds it she kept putting it well that's another rabbit hole I'm into well that's another rabbit hole I'm into so I never thought of like you just kind of follow rabbit holes for fun I thought no you avoid rabbit holes but it's just but I understand I guess it's again it's a fun hobby like she said it's a hobby for her so anyway, on that note, I'm going to go get some Chinese and uh, go home and uh, feed Tober and Bell. And I hope everyone has a good time and uh, talk to you later.